Welcome back to The Panic Room, everyone, and to a first time reading video today. So guys, I did a video like this a number of months back, the first time I read Poppy C. Bright, and I was very kindly recently sent a number of today's author's works, and I thought, let's do another one, shall we? So I was sent three of his books. I've read two of them, the two shortest ones that I was sent, and I feel like I have a decent handle on his style now. I have every intention of reading the third one, but today I wanted to talk about my first time reading Aaron Beauregard. And I hope I'm saying his name right. I apologize if I'm butchering it. You guys know I'm good at that. So the two books that I read were So Sorry and The Slob. Now I've seen this one floating around booktube a number of places. And for the most part, it seems to have gotten pretty decent reviews, you know, for what it is. And I'm really glad I read this second. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. Uh, but you guys also know, if you've been around here for any length of time, that I am kind of critical of extreme horror and splatterpunk, simply because I need more than just, wow, this is really gross. Like, for me personally, I like to have a little bit more of a story. I had seen so much about the Slav and how people really liked it that I wanted to give it a whirl, because as big of a critic as I am, I will not not read a book. Like, if I want to read it, I'm going to read it. I don't care what genre it's in or whatever. Like, if I feel like reading it, I'm going to read it. Uh, now, I might enjoy my time. I might not enjoy my time. And I'm not going to be like, oh, God, it's splatterpunk or whatever. Because I understand that every author is different. And every author approaches horror or really any genre you want to name differently. So if I completely write off an entire genre based on X amount of books, then I think I'm doing myself a disservice. That's how I look at that. So I thought... Let's give this guy a whirl. And I'm going to say straight up, for people who enjoy splatterpunk, I feel like Aaron is your Stephen King. <laughs> like, I think he did a damn fine job. Am I going to call myself a convert and I just love me some splatterpunk? No. Uh, <laughs> here and there. Here and there. It's fine. But I will say, taking the step back, I honest to God think that Aaron is at the top of his game when it comes to splatterpunk books. So let's talk about So Sorry first. I'm so glad I read this one first because out of these two, I feel like this one was the lesser splatterpunky. <laughs> Is that a word? That's not a word. Not that it's butterflies and rainbows, because it's not, but I don't think it is quite as intense as the slob. Now that being said, both of these together have more triggers than a gun show. Okay, so keep that in mind. But in So Sorry, you have a number of characters you know, specifically you start out with this one young man and what he does to this other young man. Of course, no spoilers. Then the story kind of widens. Like, it almost seems like it's going to come to a conclusion, but then you kind of take a step back in the setting and you get some more characters and the story continues. And it's done really well. When the story continued, the characters that come in later, like this homeless man and these, these two individuals that he's with, that was almost worse for me. You know, I could deal with blood and guts like all day long, but you start talking about like other bodily fluids and functions and other things. And I'm just like, <laughs> so the second half of the book was a little bit more difficult for me. Now there were some really big triggers in the second half of the book involving SA uh, of minors. <laughs> so you gotta keep that in mind. However, I have said it before and I'll say it again. One of the best things that I love about horror is that the gates are flung wide open. What matters is that an author has the freedom to write what they want to write. I don't think that that should be, you know, reined in at all or labeled or in any way corralled really because the minute you do is the minute we start to go down the path towards blank pages. And I don't like that idea. So I love the fact that the gates are flung wide open with horror. That's one of my favorite parts of the genre. And Boy, does Aaron just come running through those gates. <laughs> no, he, he does a really good job for what it is. Now, again, I'm going to stress the fact that if you don't like this kind of thing, if you don't like Splatterpunk, you're not going to enjoy this. You're just not. Could I read a book like So Sorry every single day? No, not at all. Do I like books like this every now and then? Yeah, because they kind of uh, shake it up a little bit. It had a good story. I thought that the characters were well done. Uh, one in particular, I really thought he did the main like homeless man at the end. I thought he did that very well. Um, the two boys at the beginning were fine, but the homeless man at the end, I really liked how he worked that character. And I liked how he worked his interactions with his traveling companions. So I thought that was really well done. I did enjoy the story. I loved the ending. 
loved the ending of this. Uh, I was hoping it would end that way. Uh, I didn't think it would, just based on the absolute chaotic horror that was happening. I didn't think it would have the happiest ending that you could have possibly thought of. It's not happy, don't get me wrong, but it's probably the most positive one that could have happened. I hope that makes sense. Uh, <laughs> so I, I was shocked that it went that way. So I have to say, I, I did overall enjoy this. There are some really intense parts. Uh, it's like I said, it's like going to a gun show. There's so many triggers. But then I immediately dived into this. And anyone who's read this knows that that was probably not a good idea. So coming out of So Sorry, I was like, yeah, I could deal with this. You know, it's, it's even shorter. I can read it, you know, just on like a Sunday. And it's just about some gross guy that keeps a woman in his house. What could possibly go wrong? Uh, yeah, I haven't gagged at a book since Cows. I gagged at this. Again, not over the blood. Blood doesn't bother me. The description of the filth, particularly infections, like, oh my god, just so much pus. Because like, there are some things that happen that I, I, I legit, I gagged. I don't know how else to say it. I gagged. It was so gross. This has every, every single trigger that has ever been listed in triggerdom in it. <laughs> triggerdom, I don't think that's a word. All of the things, all of the vomit things are in this book. Like I said, it's not the blood and guts. There was plenty of that. But what really got me was the descriptions of like source and wounds and infections and secretions and oh my god I want to gag now. Uh, there are two scenes in particular that I want to talk about and these are not spoilers. This is kind of going to go down in the same vein as Mother Maggot. Like I can tell you about some of these and they're not going to be spoilers because it was almost every other page. There's a scene where there is a certain act happening and he barfs, okay? Like he blows chunks. Oh my god, like she has a wound on her face. I'm not gonna go any further than that. She has a wound on her face and it's talking about how like she can feel the vomit in the wound. Did I enjoy that? No. Do I want to read that all the time? No. Was it well done? Hell yes. There's another scene towards the end. And let's see if I could do this without setting off all of the YouTube algorithm. An act is getting ready to happen, okay? And a certain part of this man's body has pus coming out of it. And it's gross. He calls it, at one point, he says it looks like a cow udder, and I can't get that out of my head now. Uh, a cow udder, okay? And at one point he takes it and he rubs it on her, the, the plug-in part, and it talks about how like he's rubbing it like on and in. Again, did I enjoy it? No. Was it well done? Yes. If you like Splatterpunk and you have never read The Slop, you are doing yourself a disservice because I feel like this is everything that you would ever want in a splatterpunk book. Now, before we leave here, let's talk about the ending because I have to say, I didn't really care much for the ending of The Slob. It seemed a little bit rushed. The second book is called Son of Slob or The Son of the Slob. And yeah, I mean, of course that means what you think it means at the end of this book about what has to happen to her. But I did not like the ending. The whole like way it wrapped up the slob himself. I don't know, the final boss battle was fine. It was what happened after that, like to kind of tie up some loose ends about like what the slob was doing, I guess as a job. I, I don't know, it just, it seemed a little bit rushed. It made sense, it made complete sense. It just seemed a little bit rushed. Now is that because it was the most normal part of the book and everything else, you know, kind of made it drab in comparison? Possibly. But yeah, I, I have to say, I wasn't super thrilled with the ending. Uh, it was fine. It was fine. Uh, but that being said, to kind of give you guys an overview, Aaron Beauregard is a master of this particular genre. I have to say, in my opinion. I think he's a master of the genre. Uh, is it my favorite genre? No. Is it going to become my favorite genre? Probably not. Am I going to not read the third book that I have by him? No. As a matter of fact, I want to. Uh, I have some other books because... I do need to step away from books like this. Like, I, I just can't. Like, the grossness. It's not that I'm scared or, like, it unnerves me. No, it's just, it's so gross. Like, I don't want to read about pus and infections all the time. At least not to, like, this level. Uh, so, yeah, I, I do have some other things that I want to read. Uh, but the Aaron Beauregard book will happen. Uh, I think he's really good at what he does. And I have to say that to compare him to some of the other books that I have been very critical of, namely Cows and Mother Maggot, he does have a story here. He has aspects of a story that can involve a reader, whereas I didn't really get that. 
from a book like Mother Maggot. So I have to say, you know, kind of to wrap this up because I know I've been rambling for a while, these are wonderful examples of like the splatterpunk extreme horror type genre. If you were into that and you were looking for some extreme reads, I highly recommend. Again, for me personally, books like this, kind of few and far between for me. I like a sprinkling of this, can't do it every day. It's just me. That's kind of the conclusion I've came to. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. This is kind of my first little rambly tiptoe into the, the gunk uh, <laughs> of the Aaron Beauregard splatterpunk books. So, so I do hope if you are a fan of splatterpunk or this type of book that you will give Aaron a shot. I think he is, again, a master of the game. So Aaron Beauregard. So guys, let me know down below what you think of Aaron's work, if you've read it. What do you think about Splatterpunk? You know, let me know. You know, are you like me? Can you handle it every now and then? Do you read it every day? If so, give me your secret. Uh, <laughs> let me know down below. And guys, of course, if you like this, please hit like, hit subscribe. It would really help me out. And until next time, bye for now.